The, the monarch E, we have a substantial cohort of premenopausal patients, mostly f uh, from the Asian countries, where they have a lot of premenopausal patients, but also from the rest of the world. So we did a detailed analysis of, of those uh, patients, and there is basically two findings. First of all, um, we were surprised that in monarch E, which covers a worldwide um, range of breast cancer treatment, not all of the young women, which were all supposed to be high risk, because they were not positive, um, got GnRH. So apparently the uptake of GnRH plus tamoxifen or AI in some countries is slower than others, but now the guidelines uh, are very homogeneous around the world recommending that. So I, I'm sure that in the future, more young women at high risk of relapse will get um, a GnRH. So we saw that the treatment patterns with regard to the endocrine backbone differ uh, per country. And uh, the other uh, important information is that the um, efficacy results for two years of abimacyclib versus just endocrine therapy are very similar to the overall cohort um, in the ITT population. So um, young women derive the same benefit as, as older women from adding abimacyclib to their endocrine therapy. And lastly, with regard to safety, there is just a little bit of information um, that um, um, with tamoxifen, you have slightly more venous thrombotic events than with an AI plus GnRH, obviously, in the young women. So that needs to be considered if you have a patient with a venous thrombotic um, history, then I would just uh, recommend if you want to use a bemocyclic that give her a GnRH plus AI. So very practically important information and we're currently in the process of um, writing a full disclosure so we can make this available for the community so they know exactly how a bemocyclic works and what are the points that need to be considered in the young women.